So this is the reverse grid race then from Spa, Frank or Sean. I expect the front wheel drive cars to get a bit of a poor start. Oh, we've actually got Piper who's jumped the start there. Uh, that's going to give everyone behind him a bit of a conundrum. Cheech is going to have to dive out of the way. Uh, Piper then, right down to the back of the grid at the start. That's going to let's have a little bit of a replay of that. So Dominator's going to get a great start in the Jag. Now the BMW JC gets away nicely as well. So there's a Lamborghini there, Angus McCall. That flies out of the way. Uh, there's a couple of McLarens in this league now as well. So it's one of the most mixed up grids I think I've seen. Uh, albeit we've only got nine cars to talk about in this race. So I'll be honest, there may not be too much content in this one, but I'll see what I can do. So uh, coming into Eau Rouge right on for the first time. Vasco with Dominate leading the way ahead of JC in the BMW. Uh, Say X to get the McLaren with Angus McCoat up in the Lamborghini chasing behind him fourth. Rafa then in a McLaren 650S as well. Uh, followed by P. Gibb in one of only two Audi TTs in the field. It has been quoted as the OP car. Uh, let's go and see what's happening at the top. Dominator still leading the way, but the BMW is chasing him down. Uh, the Jag very powerful in a straight line. The McLaren does tail off a little bit, but uh, hangs on in there. It does handle very well. Uh, the top guy's having a nice little fight here. We've got JC piled in for a lovely move by JC. Let's just go on board the BMW. So Dominator gives plenty of room. JC gives plenty of room on the outside as well. Just hangs his car in there. Uh, yeah, nice move then by the BMW driver. Gets himself up into P1. Say Mexican Raffo, two McLaren drivers battling it out as well for third. And that is actually Raffo up past Dominator. Dominator in the Jag, he's starting to lose a lot of places here. A little bit further back. Uh, is that Miggins that was going a little bit wide? Yeah, it was Say Rex. Oh, we've got Angus back up in the Lamborghini. He's off. So jumping on board the Lambo. Side by side, that doesn't really work, and Angus Makoa gets shuffled out onto the outside. Uh, that is going to give Miggins a bit of a run on the Lamborghini driver. Miggins is able to um, put his car up the inside through Puon. Uh, and our race winner from last time is the Lamborghini runs wide, then uh, the other Audi of Chichi. Keep an eye on him through this race. Piggy in 7th, Piper in 10th, and Angus Makoa now in that last position. JC starting to run away at the front, but Rafa's going to try and put an end to that. Dominator in the Jag in fourth, Cerexic, sorry, Dominator third, Cerexic fourth, Miggins fifth now in the McLaren. Uh, Chi Chi in the Audi. Uh, I didn't actually think the Audi felt very good here. Uh, that's just me. I've driven a lot of cars at Spa and the Audi's felt one of the worst, I'll be honest. Uh, I didn't enjoy my Spa race nearly as much as I felt I could have done in most other Group 4 cars. It's had a lot of weight added to it, and a recent balance of performance change. Uh, the Audi was um, given a little bit more power, but also given a lot more weight as well. So it's had about an extra 200 kilos. So it's a big, it's a big boy now. A couple of other cars affected by the balance of performance generally has affected front-wheel drive cars. I think the VW was also affected by it as well. I haven't got the list in front of me, but there was about a dozen, dozen changes. As we see P. Gibb there up the inside of Piper, who was trying to recover after that poor start. So JC in the HKS BMW getting chased down by Raffo in the PlayStation McLaren. Uh, Dominator holding on to third in the Jag. Sayerexic in the Michelin uh, McLaren. Oh, we've got Raffo going for a move for the lead here. He's got that done. Does carry about four or five miles an hour extra at top speed the McLaren, and that uh, is evident at the end of the Camel straight. That's also led Sayer Exit to be able to pull up to the back of Dominator a little bit. Miggins I do like delivery of Miggins' cars are clean. P5 for him at the minute, but he has got Chi Chi in the Audi right up with him. Now Chi Chi's gonna be quick until his tires start to go. Uh, which Maximum six laps, I think, in the um, in the Audi is probably what you'd expect from a set of uh, set of softs and super softs. Chichi then down the inside of the McLaren gets that move made. Angus Picot up in the Lamborghini's just got some work to do now. 
Uh, to recover lost pace. Not a lot of change up the rest of the field. Uh, it's a long lap here at Spa. We're looking about 220. Uh, I think in my league we were doing like 225, 226s. Um, so this league has a similar pace level to it. Uh, if not, sometimes quicker. So a little penalty already for Miggins. Again, relatively easy to pick those up here, but uh, they're a lot harder to burn at Spa. Whereas Red Bull, they burn anyway. You didn't really need to do anything to get rid of those penalties. Here, they um, they, they take some time. They certainly don't burn as easy. The car gone very deep there. Who is that? Was that a car that ran deep? Or am I just seeing things? Tell you what, P. Gibb there, you were lucky that Miggins was ghosted out. And so, P. Gibb again, showing his hand at taking himself off circuit. Lots of work to do now in the Audi for P. Gibb. Uh, relegated down to the back of the grid. Someone who's not relegated down to the back of the grid is the number 79 car of Raffo. Holding first place, still ahead of JC. Uh, Dominator has, if anything, has been dropping back from JC and getting caught by Sayer Exic. These guys have got uh, race leaders from last time approaching them as well. So, oh, Sayer Exec, who's invented a new line then coming through uh, Radion at the top of the hill. Uh, Chi Chi and Miggins not too far away, but there is a bit of field spread starting to kick in right now. And this is the point of the race where the drivers just need to control the race pace and make sure they're not taking too much out of the tyres. Drivers like Chi Chi and Miggins as Dominator. Has Dominator made a mistake? Oh, he's burning a penalty away. Uh, so yeah, Dominator falls down behind the Audi TT. That's uh, going to be appealing for Miggins to try and get the uh, Jaguar here. A nice little glitch there on the game where it just leaps the car in the air, but I don't know why it did it. It did it to a couple of cars in Mali. Uh, Miggins up the inside then. Uh, Dominator pretty compliant to that. Knew that move was coming and... Um, in fact, looking at it, indicated to let the uh, faster car pass. So, Dominic playing the long game here. He doesn't want to get embroiled in fights. So, yeah, he's playing the long game. So, I guess evolving stories is all about whether Chichi and Miggins can fight their way up to the top of the field. And Chase is doing a good job in the BMW so far. Uh, he's staying with Raffo. So Raffo in the McLaren, not really having this one all his own way so far. JC is keeping him on. Sayer Exit though can disrupt that if he catches him. Uh, but Sayer Exit has got a more immediate problem in the Audi of Chi Chi. Uh, that is going to be all on him like a rash very soon. But Chi Chi does run wide there. Uh, the other car that runs wide is Dominator, almost off the circuit. D10 Piper has done the exact same thing. Picked up a little bit of a penalty for that as well. Uh, Angus McCall, don't forget you can't overtake with penalties. So anyone that is carrying a penalty is unable to make an overtake. So just starting to see some cracks appearing then, just in the early stages of driving. We are seven and a bit minutes in, so we're nearly a third of the way through. JC slowly getting caught by Sayer Exit. Sayer Exit was a second a lap, second faster that lap. And JC's problem is really now that he hasn't got the slipstream of Raffo to rely on. You have to be within about seven tenths to get the slipstream. And I think Sayer Exit is probably about there. So the McLaren, yeah, definitely within range now. So the McLaren's going to get a good tow a lot uh, all along the Camel straight. That will be helping him in his efforts to catch the BMW. In fact, Sayer Exit might look for a move. Uh, backs out of it there, wasn't close enough at the time. And uh, JC can continue his defence uh, of P2. Uh, all the while, Chi Chi arguably getting caught a little bit by Miggins in the McLaren again. 
dominate holding on to six. We've got Piper, Angus McCorp and P. Gibb at the back. But like I said, the race is long, so there's plenty of time for those boys to recover lost pace. And I've no doubt they would, they would do that. For the time being, I think Chichi and Megan just need to work together, really. If they're going to catch these guys at the top, they start fighting this early on. Uh, that's just going to slow them down and burn the tyres up. So does the McLaren of Cyrexic uh, have a go at the BMW ahead? BMW just looking a little bit more confident Whee! in the corner entry. <laughs> uh, Dad, yeah, I don't know what happened there. That might be the thumbnail, to be fair. We'll see. We'll see what other good pictures come out of this one. McLaren's got a great top end, though. Uh, but through Blanchimont, uh, Cyrex, he just has to back out of the move. You can hear JC lift as well on the BMW, and uh, is Cyrex going to try and hang this round the outside of the bus stop chicane? No, JC holds his line firm in the BMW and maintains that uh, second spot for now, but you do feel like that uh, uh, that attack is not far away. Uh, I did see a change in this. So Angus McCulp was fighting with Piper Sirocco. So this is looking back on Piper's car through Blanchimont. Just misses the apex. That means he has to back out. You can see that Angus Picot got a much better drive out of Blanchimont. And the Lamborghini uh, just able to, to drive up the inside. So yeah, nice move there by Angus Picot. Oh, a nice and clean Blanchimont move with the four-wheel drive. Gets better traction as well out of the corner. So we'll stick with this little, um, this little fight. Let's say Rex is just going to have to back out here. Yeah, he is. He's, uh, you can't really go side by side up uh, up for Eau Rouge. You're asking for trouble. But if he stays within a certain range, which it looks like he is doing, this should be a relatively easy move for the McLaren down towards the end of the Camel Straight. He should get good overspeed now. The McLaren with that seventh gear. alongside the BMW does hold its own now tries to close the door on the BMW not successful uh, and JC does lose out on that uh, P2 and the problem now though for these boys is because they've been fighting away rafo has been scarpering away in the distance and these guys have been getting slowly caught by the cars behind so Miggins and Chichi uh, JC continues on in second place, so uh, JC's recovered that spot. That's a nice driving by the BMW driver. Let's check in on Rafo. How is he doing? Fastest stop of the race for Rafo. 27 2. JC then He's still managing to hold off the McLaren. Miggins is through past Chi Chi. Again, this could be these two just working together. I didn't actually see a big battle with these guys. I think I think their mindset right now is we're not even, well, we're not even halfway through the race yet. Let's worry about the fight later. Well, let's catch these guys first and let's, let's argue over a podium position rather than... Uh, rather than fourth. Is Sarex going to try and hold this round the outside of Blanchimont? On a struggle, JC moves to protect the inside. Good driving, good driving from both of them. JC obviously smart to the fact that that's what Sarah Exit were doing and immediately went to protect that inside line. Uh, Dominator is hanging on to the back of those guys. We'll be interested to see if Angus can catch up and, and P. Gibb still trying to get onto terms with these guys after his earlier mishap. Hey, Rexy, then attempt number four, five, of trying to get past the BMW side by side now as you come down towards Eau Rouge. He's going to hold this one, though. This takes balls are still side by side for Eau Rouge to go. JC has to cut the chicane. Uh, JC ends up on the grass. Well, 
let's go and have a look at that from um, from Jace's perspective now. I don't normally advocate side by side driving through a uh, rouge. But saying that, it's not like it doesn't happen in real life. It does, but it's quite rare. Uh, uh, so Cyrexic's there, so Cyrexic is ahead. Uh, there is absolutely no contact, uh, absolutely none, just, yeah, JC had to take to the escape mode, really. Uh, Cause he's kind of quite a bit of damage in the process and scaring a couple of track marshals, and unfortunately for JC, it um, looks like he might be suffering from a mechanical issue with his car there. Gets it, manages to get it back up and running. That must have given Piper a bit of a scare. <laughs> so, bored with Piper's car. I don't know if we'll see yellows out, we haven't. So, oh, he's just trying to get off the racing line. So Jace is back up to speed now. That uh, issue must have cleared for him. And uh, P. Gibb can drive past. Uh, so let's have a little bit of another look at it then. So Raffo in first. Sayrexic with a bit of a gap to Raffo now. Uh, it is a McLaren 1 2 3 at the minute in this league. Uh, so you see Raffo there at the forefront, then you've got Sayrexic, and then you've got Miggins, uh, Chichi, who will be starting to feel the pain of those tyres round about now. So six laps was about the most you wanted to be taking out of the Audi's tyres before they really, really started to lose grip. So I'll probably expect that Audi in at the end of the lap. Uh, Dominator in the Jag, hanging with these guys. Uh, he's certainly not being caught by these guys behind as Piper gets himself uh, back into six. I think that happened earlier on in the lap. Uh, Angus McCart will be still battling for that seventh place. Uh, P. Gibb in eighth now, and JC uh, is down to ninth, which is unfortunate as he looked like he was having a good start. So, right, not long left in this one. Uh, we are at half distance. Let's see how the base evolution comes up. Towards the end of lap seven, then, a lot of the field have pitted. Most of the top five have not, so does Raffo come in this time round? He does. Does Cyrexic come in this time round? He does. I'm going to guess Miggins will. Uh, Angus McCall probably will. Uh, Piper had pitted, but Chi Chi had managed to catch him, so Chi Chi's through. So yeah, Angus comes in, Chi Chi's going to continue on. I'd imagine Piper will peel off in. Um, and then Dominate is the next car that has um, has pitted, but I'd imagine the likes of Miggins etc will come out and start to battle. Uh, Raffo should maintain his lead, in fact he does, he's out. So Raffo in the McLaren, uh, out in P1. This is how we're now going to the end, we've got 12 minutes remaining here at Spa. And here's the recap of where everyone sits as we go into this. So we've got Raffo. P1, Sayrexic, P2, Chi Chi, P3, Miggins, P4, Dominator, P5, Angus Makoto, P6, P Gibb, P7, Piper, P8, and JC in P9. Uh, so that's your race order going into the closing stages here at Spa Franca Shop. Uh, that can all change, and I've got a feeling that uh, Chi Chi's got the bit, uh, bit between his teeth. Uh, we'll start attacking. Say exit very soon. He needs to really do that before Miggins catches him. So he can't really spend too long battling with the McLaren. He needs to make, be quite clinical here um, and hope that the two McLarens fight over each other. Uh, Say exit will not want to give this position up. Uh, but the Audi, with its fresh tyres, will be a faster car on single lap pace than the McLaren will. The McLaren will just come into its own a little bit later on in the stint. So save exit there, defending against the Sausage Mobile. I think where's, where's Chi Chi going to get this move done? The Audi strength's really lying high down for so Oh, well, there we go. That's, that's exactly where the position's going to be made. <laughs> I was thinking, I was just about to say, maybe he'll go for it out of Blanchemont, but I would say Exit made that very easy for him. Uh, just ran a little bit too deep and went on the beach. Uh, that might hold Miggins up. Miggins should have the overspeed. This should be a relatively easy pass for Miggins, it is. Uh, 
So Miggins not really held up at all by Sayrexic, and uh, that's uh, that's Miggins back through and up to third position. Further on. We haven't got any direct on track actually. We've got P. Gibb and Angus Bacol relatively close together. Piper's not too far away from these guys as well. Can Miggins catch Chi Chi? It's going to be harder for the Audi to hold its pace the, um, the closer we get towards the end of the race. Uh, what's the gap between Raffo and Chi Chi? I shall be honest, uh, five seconds. So. Unless Rafa makes a mistake, it's it's his race to lose, to be fair. So let's bring you the last five minutes of this race uh, completely uninterrupted. So as we left it uh, not too long ago, the gap between Rafa and Chichi was five seconds. It's now down to just over three. Although I, I, I've got to be honest, I think Chichi might be running out of time to catch the McLaren driver. But again, we'll we'll see. Um, Chi Chi has done the fastest lap of the race at 27.1. The problem he's going to have now though is tyres, so it, the McLaren's tyres aren't going to go off as fast and um, yeah, the extra weight on the Audi, he's just going to count against it really in the final five minutes. Uh, that might give Miggins an opportunity, although he's got a little bit of a penalty to get rid of. Uh, tyres on that McLaren, absolutely fine. Not an issue on Miggins' car. And as you can see, the visual gap between Miggins and Chi Chi isn't all that, so it's probably doable. Um, again, Sayrex, it's a potential threat. But I think Miggins' focus is purely in front of him. Um, Dominate is doing well in the Jag. Hope I haven't cursed it by saying that, but he's holding on to fifth. No issues from behind at all. Uh, P. Gibb, after his... And again, this is a theme with P. Gibb's racing. After his early off... Um, He's, he's actually recovering it. Um, he's ahead of Angus McCotop in the Lamborghini, who is in turn ahead of Piper in the VW Sirocco. Um, and JC in the BMW after that, uh, off here, a few laps ago. Currently holding ninth. So, Rafa, that lap was a personal best, the 27 1. So. Yeah, not not really. In fact, he, he pulled away from Chichi that lap. Chichi's actually starting to just lose tyres now. Um, and Miggins, whose tyres are pretty fresh. He's got to get rid of that penalty, right? Because you don't want to be overtaken with a penalty because the, the punishment for that is a 10-second pen. <laughs> it's 10 seconds. Um, I think it yeah, is. Yeah, 10-second penalty. So you, you don't want to be doing that. So Miggins has got to drop that. And um, he should have, he should have, um, should get around 12 laps. They might even get a 13th lap in. We'll see. So does Miggins get, he gets rid of a little bit of that penalty. So he's got to think about what he wants to do with this. Um, best bet for Miggins is getting the slipstream of that Audi. 29.7 that lap for Chichi, so yeah, it was a really bad lap for the Audi. Uh, Getting the slipstream of the Audi and then just coast because you won't lose that much pace and um, you're basically getting a free time. A little bit further back, uh, it's P. Gibb under threat from Dominator, potentially, you know. Um, oh, wait, no, it was the other way around, wasn't it? One second, let me, um, let me just do one of my magical cuts. On board the Jag now. Um, so yeah, you're gonna see where this one unfolds a little bit for Dominator. So I do curse him, so I'm sorry for that. I said that I said a minute ago he was doing really well, but um, he ends up getting reset, uh, and P. Gibb just just sails round the outside of him basically. Uh, it's gonna give Angus McCoat up an opportunity as well to um, to, to close in on the uh, ailing Jaguar. Can Angus get a move made on the Jag? It's going to have dirty tyres for a little bit. It's going to be down on its face. It's dirty and its tyres up even more. Look. Was, uh, Angus getting a load of aero wash and actually just backing out of the move. If it had completed that move, it would have been illegal, so he's backed out of it. 
I might put Piper up his um, up his pipe though. Again, closing lap. Let's see how that one evolves. Miggins, Chichi, and Rafo. I'd say Rafo's safe. Looking at the gap, Rafo's just pulled that gap. Now he can still do 27s, uh, whereas Chichi's actually starting to struggle in the Audi now. Uh, and I can fully, fully sympathise. It's an absolute pig to drive when the tyres start to go. You have no front end grip at all. Um, and Miggins in the McLaren. Well, he didn't get nerfed by the uh, balance of performance upgrade update. Has just one tenth of his penalty to get rid of. Now is going to be a good time to try and shake that. Like I say, it's hard to serve a penalty. Oh, he goes wide there. And he gets even more of a penalty. It's just. GT Sport is not being kind to uh, Miggins, but it has gifted Chi Chi a bit of a lifeline with just 20 odd seconds of the race remaining. If these guys get across the line in time, they'll get another lap. Rafa might actually get a lap of honour in here because I don't know if these guys are going to get across in time. They might just miss out on the uh, 13th lap. Rafa's not going to miss out, he's going to be going round again. So 13 laps for Rafa. Chi Chi, meanwhile. I think that's it for Chi Chi and Miggins. Yeah, that's it. So Chi Chi finishes second, Miggins third, Sayrexic fourth, uh, P Gibb fifth, Angus Paco up, does end up getting Dominator in the end. So let's see how that happens. Just gets a great drive out of Stavlo. Much slipstream as he can. I'll just try and get the move made around Blanchard on the problem. For um, Angus here is the Jags a great straight line car. And you can actually hear Dominator back out of that one there. He didn't want to, he didn't want any of that smoke. So yeah, so exit fourth, P Gibb fifth. A hard four afternoon for P Gibb today. He's had a lot to deal with. Uh, so he'll be probably quite happy with a fifth. Angus Bacotel finishes 6th with Dominator in 7th, Piper in 8th and JC in 9th place. But all the plaudits go to GT Raffo. I'm not going to worry about his last lap all that much. He's, um, he's out there on his own just doing a, a lap of honour. A great race for um, a great race for Rafa. Maximum points. Good uh, good points from this weekend for him as well. Uh, with the um, team PlayStation doing as well as they did, uh, especially in the Pro One League. I don't know if the game will actually give him enough time to get round. I don't know if it'll time out before the, um, how much time's after the replay, it's 33 minutes, yeah, we've got another minute, and he'll make it around in time, so, <clears throat> yeah, well done Rafa, mate, solid drive, my friend, dreams do, dreams do come true, Lewis, miracles do happen, mate, I, I, I miss F1. Let's just hope the McLaren team of F1 is as successful as the McLarens driven by <laughs> driven by Pro One drivers. He's flashing his lights all the time. He must know that the replay is going to be focusing on him at this point, and he'll be getting pretty much a full lap of uninterrupted coverage. So that's it. Then Rafa has just two corners remaining to wrap up the win. Well done to you, mate. Well done to Rafa for winning the spa.